problem 3.2-1. The problem reads, the bar of constant diameter 80 millimeters but composed of two different materials is fixed at A and C. A load P of 100 kilonewtons is applied at D. Find the support reactions at A and C. The member is supported by, wall, by a wall at A and a wall at C. There are two different materials of which it's composed, each with its own modulus of elasticity which is given here. We have the dimensions, we have everything we need to solve this problem. I've begun by drawing a free body diagram. Now I will sum the forces in the x direction. Summing my forces gives me this expression, reaction AX plus reaction CX minus 100 kilonewtons is equal to zero. I'm going to call this equation one, and we'll come back to it. Because there are two unknown reactions in this equation, and I have no further static equilibrium equations that I can apply, this member is statically indeterminate. That means I need to come up with my own new equation in it to be able to solve this problem. And I'm going to use the force method to write my equation of compatibility. Now I've taken this problem and I've broken it up into two simpler problems that I can solve. And I've done that by removing the wall at C for the structure, and if I remove the wall at C, then under this load, this member is going to get shorter. And the amount that it will get shorter, I will call delta P. In the structure below, the wall is represented as the force CX. The wall does not permit the structure to shrink, and it's going to pull it back a distance of delta F, we'll call it. And now I can write my compatibility equation. I've written my compatibility equation. It is that this delta P is equal to this delta F. And now I'm going to expand delta P. That's going to be equal to PL over AE. Okay, I've expanded my compatibility equation. For delta P, I'm going to have two terms. Why do I have two terms? Well, let's look up at the problem. Delta P corresponds to this figure here. And with a force 100 kilonewtons at this point, which is point D, there is going to be a 100 kilonewton force in compression in this member from A, that's at the wall, all the way to point D. Because the material changes at point B, that means the value for my modulus of elasticity will need to change in the expression. That's why I need to divide it into two parts. This first part is the delta from A to B. The second term is delta from B to D. And you can see that course the lengths correspond to this. Here from A to B the length is 600 millimeters or 0.6 meters. From B to D the length is 200 millimeters or 0.2 meters. Now from D to C, there's no internal force. That means I don't need another term to describe uh, deflection from D to C because the deflection from D to C is zero. Now for delta F, I need to use these two terms and they represent this figure here at the bottom. Okay? There's one force, it's CX, acting along the whole member. And because the material changes at B, I need two terms. One to represent delta from A to B, and one that represents delta from B to C. So you can see from A to B the distance is 0.6 meters. From B to C the distance is 0.4 meters. And I've also included the corresponding modulus of elasticity. You can see in all these equations, the cross-sectional area cancels out because it's the same. And now I can simplify with algebra. Simplifying, I get CX is equal to 87.42 kilonewtons. When I substitute the value for CX into equation one above, I can solve for AX. It is equal to 12.49 kilonewtons. And the problem is done.